revisit in this little exercise text on a curve in Affinity Photo for iPad. Now this is using a macro that was generated by Paul Muddit and you'll find him on a Facebook group called Affinity Photo and Designer for iPad. A very useful group and a very kind gentleman for making this macro. Now it's a handmade macro and as you're probably aware if you're watching this, um, text on curves does not natively exist in Affinity Photo for iPad. Or the desktop version for that matter, I don't think. Now what we've got on screen here at the moment are some curves. Yes, you can see that. So let's start with a rather simple curve. A straight line, in fact. And I've got a pixel layer, which you don't always need, but I want to make sure I haven't got either that layer or the image layer selected. So we're on the pixel layer. I'll just hide that away. Now what I want to draw first is using the node tool. I want to use the pen, actually change it to the pen tool. I've got line selected, zero point and a black line. So it's a zero point width. Now the, the point is there. Let me see if I can put it in edit mode. That gets rid of that point. Now there we go. There's a straight line. Using the macro and the download link for the macro, which is in the files area of the Facebook group, and it'll download if you follow the link. I'll put the link in the description on the YouTube panel. It's called MUDS Macros. Text on a curve. I'll just move my keyboard out of the way. And you can see that it's there. Now, for some for reasons I can't figure out, on my particular iPad, it puts the text in to start with upside down, which is a fat lot of good to anybody. But let's move that along there to the end. That's the red cursor. text on a curve and you can see what's happening there it's pushing it about all over the place I've got that there that puts the end point there why that's doing that I do not know but, it, suffice it to say, it's text on a curve. We can move that. You can see that it's text on a straight line. Well, anyone can do that. But let's get a little more interesting here. I'll put another layer on because I don't want to... Well, why don't we just use that one and I'll move it up. There we go. There's another pixel layer to separate the two. This one will be on top of anything we do. An ellipse. Yes. So let's just put in an ellipse just there. Text on a curve. Now, I must say, if you use this macro, you will have more success than me. I do not know for the life of me why everything I do inverts that text. But I'm moving the end point around to there. There's the beginning point. And I'm pushing that around there. Text on a curve. And that's very easy. It's an aerial eight point at the moment. Let's highlight that. Change the aerial to oh, cartoon. Bada boom. And there's text on a curve in bada boom font. Take that away, take that away. Now I can move that back over there. For some reason it jumps off. I've got a sneaking suspicion that it's not behaving as it should on my iPad mini. So some people 
are having the same problem, others are not. But you can see that what you've got there is text on a curve. Once the text is in there, you can alter it. Go back to there. There's your there's your there's your push point. You can alter that so it goes up the top. You can alter the end point, the start point, and the finish point. You'll notice my keyboard. I've got that so I can push it around. This is an iPad Mini Five, by the way. It's very small iPad, so <laughs> I've got to push the keyboard around. Otherwise, I can't see what I'm doing. So let's put the keyboard up there for a moment. Select that there, no keyboard. Because what I want to do, now this will be a little trickier. Pen tool. I don't want to be in line mode, I want to be in pen mode. And I want to start on the girl's back, on the statue's back here, put a point Another point, another point. Follow the leg line around quite a bit. I've probably got far too many points there and some of them are out of out of line, but I won't no, I won't mess about trying to straighten them up because that can be a pain when it's so small. There we go. Trouble is you push one and you push others. Now take it out of edit mode and we've got we've got a reasonable line over the statue of the girl, her back, um, hips, legs and so on. Now if we put text on a curve, this one will be hard to straighten because for some reason, as I said, on mine, it goes in upside down. Let's hope you have more success. And as you can see, where can I put that keyboard so it's out the way? There we go. There's the end point. And there's the start point. Now, I've got to push that around. So you've got to put a space in front of the word text. Text on a curve. Let's go to there. And there you have text on a curve. Now remember I said that you download the macro to do this in photo. Uh, Affinity photo on the iPad particularly that's the one I'm using here and I'm using a small iPad the fact that the text starts on mine upside down don't be discouraged by that because on Paul's iPad it doesn't don't ask me why it does it on this one I'm still trying to figure that out but you can see you can put text on a curve if you follow the curve of an image underneath as I did on that one you can put text on a straight line there's that one, there's that one, and there's that one. Text on a curve. In fact, any curve you like. I can fill this, this little page, and it's only a 512 by 512, I think. Yes, I, I made this originally icon size, so 512 by 512 is not very big. Can we do others? Ellipse tool. Of course you can. Diamond. Oops, 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 oops. Pixel layer. We want to make sure we're on the pixel layer or I'll really mess things up and draw a diamond. Oops. 
What have we got now? Pixel layer. Oh, I've, I've almost messed it up. So let's not keep going. Otherwise, what I've done will be indistinguishable from what you really want to do. Okay, that's it for text on a curve using MUDS macros. And there's lots of other macros in there in that. You can see there, select from layer, pencil, portrait, so on, in paint, Dave's six layer, high pass sharpening, and so on and so on. There are things you can play with. I'm showing you text on a curve because I particularly wanted to do some text across uh, the saddle of a motorbike. And uh, that was successful with this. And I can, I can use designer because text on a curve is built into Affinity Designer. But I'm using photo in this case and not having text on a curve in photo has been driving me nuts. So there you go. Text on a curve rebooted. To show you that it does work as expected, and I don't know why it doesn't work on that other image I've got, but there's two that have just come straight up. But the interesting thing with this, if I take the top corner there and bring it down, it, re it inverts it or puts it upside down. So I don't know quite what's going on there. Let's put another pixel layer on top of that one. See what happens if I do a rectangle and put in text on a curve. And there it is there. There's the end point. I'll bring that down that side. Text on a curve on a square. Now that started off near the bottom. And not the top. Let's see if we have the same problem with an ellipse. I don't know what we'll do. We won't use the ellipse. We'll use the crescent. There's a crescent. Text on a curve. And there it is. Bring that back there text on a curve. So it's appearing the right way up on this particular example. Just in addition to the um, little tutorial I showed before. Okay, part number three, just to show you what can be done. Um, there's a, an icon that I found on the internet of a fingerprint. Um, let's see if I can find which. There it is there. There's the text around it. And Hello Batman is the top one. And you can see the curve underneath that. Well, the, the bar, I just put in um, a slightly off-center bar. Bada boom, 10 point. And the size of that, that's also 512 by 512. The previous one, um, part number two, where I showed you the straight line and the couple of ellipse, the ellipse and the square, etc. That was a much larger document, 1800 pixels by something. So it depends sometimes on the size of the screen you're using. Um, but there's a good example.